ಎಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೆ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟುಡೆ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಟೆನ್ ಆಫ್ ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಹೈಡ್ರಾಲಜಿ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಟೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಫೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಹೈಡ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಫ್ ಅಬ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹೈಡ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಫ್ and also we have discussed on run off process estimation of run off in today's session we will be discussing on factors affecting run off let us have a recap of what we have studied in our previous sessions that is 7 8 and 9 in previous session we have discussed on hydrograph hydrograph is a graphical representation of discharge versus time where discharge is taken on y axis and time is taken on x axis already we have discussed in our previous class and we also discussed on obstruction from precipitation which are the obstruction from precipitation some of the obstruction from precipitation are also called as water losses these water losses are infiltration depression storage evaporation transpiration evapotranspiration etc and water losses is equal to precipitation minus runoff right whatever the precipitation which occurs from this precipitation if we subtract surface runoff then we will get water losses and here evaporation is one of the loss evaporation is the process by which liquid changes into gaseous state or vapor state due to transfer of energy and evaporation is measured using an instrument called evaporation pan transpiration it is a process by which the water escapes from the leaves and body of plants and this water evaporates from leaves and body of plants this process we call it as transpiration the combined effect of evaporation and transpiration we call it as evapotranspiration in some in some places where we will be having some moisture in the soil the moisture from the soil also gets escaped from the escape to the atmosphere the combined effect of the loss of water from soil and also the loss of water from the trees and grass this effect we call it as the transpiration plus evaporation which is called as combined effect of evapotranspiration this evapotranspiration is measured using an instrument called lissi meter then called interception what is this interception the rain water after falling onto the ground surface gets intercepted on the leaves and also on the parts of buildings if you have any buildings even buildings also will get sweated this part of the rainfall which gets intercepted we call it as interception loss next is the depression storage the water gets stored in the form of uh, ponds lakes streams etc this water which is stored in the lake in the streams and in some portions of depressions like ponds we call it as depression storage you can see this depression storage here and infiltration is that part of the precipitation which flows into the ground which is infiltrated into the ground and reaches the water table which is called infiltration next we discussed on runoff runoff is that portion of precipitation which flows over the land after undergoing various types of losses and there are three types of runoff surface runoff subflow or water flow and direct precipitation over river so this is a surface runoff the surface runoff we have two types base flow or water flow and direct precipitation over river next is subsurface or subsurface runoff this runoff is that part of uh, the runoff which flows below the ground which called as subsurface runoff the ground water flow the water which is getting infiltrated into the soil reaches the ground water and even ground water also starts flowing from one place to another place this we call it as ground water flow or base flow next is estimation of runoff this already we have discussed in our previous class how runoff is estimated runoff is estimated using two methods 
one is called runoff coefficient method and by empirical formula method what is this runoff coefficient method in runoff coefficient method uh, we have a, we are going to find out the discharge using the relation runoff is equal to cap where c is called as runoff coefficient a is called as area of catchment and p is rainfall in centimeter and area we are taking in hectares and uh, c the runoff coefficient which is a constant and the constant c depends on various types of surfaces if it is a rocky or impermeable surface it values varies from 0.8 to 1 if it is slightly permeable the value of c varies from 0.6 to 0.8 if it is a sandy soil the value of c varies from 0.2 to 0.3 this is how the c value is taken based on right based on the catchment condition and next is runoff estimation by method 2 which is called as rational method in this method we are using the formula q is equal to kia divided by 36 where q is runoff in meter cube per second and k is runoff coefficient i is intensity of rainfall in centimeter per hour and a is the area in hectares this method is called as runoff coefficient method and the value of k is taken as like this for urban area the value of k varies from 0.4 to 0.8 in cultivated area it varies from 0.3 to 0.7 for pasture it varies from 0.1 to 0.4 and in forest area it varies from 0.1 to 0.4 so this is the value of k for various value method and the empirical formula method let us have an empirical formula method in this empirical formula method the first formula which we will be discussing is cos loss formula what is this cos loss formula here the cos loss formula is a runoff r is equal to p minus t divided by 3.74 where r is called runoff in centimeter p is rainfall in centimeter t is mean temperature in degree celsius for the entire catchment area using this formula we can find out runoff next is the lazy's formula in lazy's formula is given by runoff r is equal to p divided by 1 plus 3 304.8 f divided by p into s where f is called monsoon duration factor which varies from 0.5 to 1.5 yes is called catchment factor which varies from 0.25 to 1.7 p is rainfall and next is english formula the english formula we have two formulas for english one is r is equal to this is for guard section and non guard section they are classified into two types for guard section r is equal to 0.85 p minus 30.5 for non guard areas the value say plain areas the value of r varies from the value of r is given by the formula p minus 17.8 divided by 254 into p where p is called rainfall and r is runoff this we have discussed in our previous class right this is a recap of the previous session let us discuss on the today's session that is factors affecting runoff there are various factors which affects runoff the factors affecting runoff is classified into two main categories let us categorize the factors which affects runoff runoff all of you know what is runoff runoff is that part of precipitation which flows over the land after undergoing various types of losses the losses may be a transpiration loss evaporation loss evapotranspiration loss it may be interception loss right it may be infiltration loss and depression storage loss these are the different types of losses after undergoing all the loss the flow which flows the water which flows right over the land we call it as surface runoff what are the factors this runoff depends on there it can be categorized into two categories one is 
characters of precipitation other one is characteristics of drainage basin like this we have classified the factors affecting runoff into two categories one is characteristics of precipitation other one is characteristics of drainage basin first let us discuss on characteristics of precipitation what is this characteristics of precipitation how the precipitation affects the runoff what are the factors of precipitation which occurs which affects runoff that we call it as characteristics of precipitation next is drainage basin this is a drainage basin the drainage basin has different categories shape of the drainage basin right then the type of vegetation in the drainage basin land use of the drainage basin soil present in the drainage basin these are called as characteristics of drainage basin then what is characteristics of precipitation duration of precipitation is one characteristics intensity of precipitation is another characteristics type of precipitation is one more type of characteristics like this there are the factors affecting runoff is broadly classified into two categories one is categories of precipitation other one is characteristics of drainage basin let us discuss in detail about these two categories one is categories of precipitation in this categories of precipitation the first category which affects runoff is type of precipitation we have come across different types of precipitation in a previous session which are the different types of precipitation one is rain other one is snow fog mist dew hail etc now the which form of precipitation gives maximum runoff more runoff i think it is rain rain is the precipitation rain is a type of precipitation which gives maximum amount of runoff right that is types of precipitation next is rainfall intensity what is rainfall intensity the depth of rainfall depth of rainfall in unit duration how much depth of rainfall has occurred in one hour that is called rainfall intensity more the rainfall intensity more will be the runoff less the rainfall intensity less will be the runoff so rainfall intensity also affects the runoff let us have the next characteristics of precipitation one is another third one is duration of precipitation duration of rainfall what is this duration of rainfall how much time the rainfall has occurred how much duration how much duration the rainfall has occurred right this more the duration of rainfall more the duration of rainfall hechu hottu male aadre okay jaasti time tagondre male agadakke male hechu hottu male aadre enagutte male jaasti adashtu male intensity jaasti adashtu runoff jaasti agutte neeru hariyo antadu jaasti agutte ಅದೇ ಥರ ಡ್ಯೂರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ರೈನ್ಫಾಲ್ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಹೊತ್ತು ಮಳೆ ಬಿದ್ದರೆ ಮೂವತ್ತು ನಿಮಿಷ ನಲವತ್ತು ನಿಮಿಷ ಐವತ್ತು ನಿಮಿಷ ಒಂದೊಂದು ಸರಿ ಒಂದು ಗಂಟೆ ಮಳೆ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನೀವು ಕೋಸ್ಟಲ್ ರೀಜನ್ಗೆ ಹೋದರೆ ಒಂದು ಗಂಟೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತ್ನಾಲ್ಕು ಗಂಟೆ ಸಹ ಮಳೆಯನ್ನು ಬಿಡ್ತಾ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಮಳೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾದಷ್ಟು ಹೆಚ್ಚಾದಷ್ಟು ಈ ನದಿಗಳು ಹೊಳ್ಳಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನೀರು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಹರಿಯುತ್ತೆ ಓಕೆ ಅಂದರೆ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ duration if the duration of rainfall is more more will be the runoff right so this is another characteristics of precipitation another characteristics of precipitation which affects the runoff right next is rainfall distribution how the rainfall has distributed this also is another factors which affects runoff right so how the rainfall distribution rainfall will be distributed at different places it won't be uniform throughout the area the distribution of rainfall also affects the runoff suppose if you have a stream here if you have a stream here if the rainfall intensity is more nearer the stream 
then more will be the runoff in the stream peak discharge will takes place in the stream if uh, the rainfall intensity is more which is far away from the drains main drains far away from the main drains it takes much time to reach the drain jaasti time thagunutte suppose nodi illi jaasti adre intensity of rainfall drainage illi irutte anta ittkona idu i biddidanta male ee drainage barodike salpa hotu time thagunutte adrinda alli enagutte sudden age peak discharge agala aa neeru sudden age ichchagadilla discharge won't be suddenly it will increase because the the time taken by the storm to reach at this particular place will take time therefore rainfall distribution also affects runoff next is the soil condition the wetness of soil is also another factor right if the rainfall has occurred antecedent rainfall we call it as if two or three days continuous if there is rain then the runoff will be more right that is also another characteristics of precipitation which affects the runoff right the soil will become wet when soil will become wet the infiltration will be less soil will not absorb rain water hence runoff will be more so if the rain has ununiform distribution and it is not a constant right every day if the rain has not occurred if the rain is occurring say about 10 days once or 20 days once like that then the soil will be dry and there is a tendency of soil get water getting absorbed by soil right there is a tendency of the water rainfall getting absorbed by soil hence runoff will be less andre continuous a male beelta idre runoff jaasti irutte 10 dinik on sali male varuk on sali male ee tara bartta idre enagutte bhoomi aa neerna absorb madak start madutte ಡ್ರೈ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಬೇಲಿನ ಪದರ ಮಣ್ಣಿನ ಪದರ ಡ್ರೈ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಬಡ್ಡಿದಂಥ ಮಳೆ ನೀರನ್ನ ಭೂಮಿ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಬ್ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಯ್ತಾ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅನದರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಅಫೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ಲೈಮೆಟಿಕ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ನೋಡಿ ಕ್ಲೈಮೆಟಿಕ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಮೇಲೂ ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಇಫ್ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ವಿಂಟರ್ ಸೀಸನ್ ಇಫ್ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಮ್ಮರ್ ಸೀಸನ್ ಇಫ್ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ರೈನ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ಮರ್ ಸೀಸನ್ ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಲೆಸ್ if there is rain during winter season the runoff will be more then very important uh, other important characteristics is secondly the characteristics of drainage basin we have discussed about characteristics of precipitation now the second factors which affects runoff is characteristics of drainage basin first is shape of the basin right so let us have the different shape of the basin how the shape of the basin affects the runoff large drainage basin that is size let us discuss about size first size of the basin first then we will discuss on shape of the basin one is size of the basin larger the size of the basin more precipitation and we will be having more peak runoff you can see the graph here the hydrograph if you see if you see the hydrograph for a large catchment more will be the runoff this is for a small catchment in the case of small catchment the discharge will be peak suddenly there will be a discharge because less time will be taken by the rain water to reach the drains illi male bidid neeru bega drain ge bilut barutte bega drainage barodrinda bega do streams alli naavu nodabodu ee distance time nodi less time more is the peak runoff time taken is less but for a large catchment time taken is more jaasti time thagunta ide illi discharge stream ge entry agadike maximum flood discharge agadike flood discharge andre maximum discharge in the stream eshtu jaasti time thagundide adhe nimge small catchment andre time taken is less for the peak flow in the stream right here for peak flow in the stream the time taken is more because longer will be the distance large distance will be there for the rain water to travel the stream so it also depends on size of the basin what is the inference more the size of the basin right time taken will be more for the flood discharge and more will be the flood discharge and if the catchment or basin is less 
it takes less time for peak discharge right so this is how the size of the basin affects the runoff next is shape of the catchment see another factor shape of the catchment is also very important for us there are different types of catchments see here the radial pattern the drainage is the radial pattern and the catchment is in radial way or is also called as fan shaped catchment and this is elongated type of catchment or fern shaped type catchment it is almost like a feather right feather of a bird so if the catchment is like this this we call it as elongated type of catchment and you have another type of catchment which is a two parts drains we have two parts middle you have a divide right like this the catchment types shapes we have three types let us see how the discharge is varying in this three types of catchment in the case of radial type of catchment you see the peak discharge is occurring right we need also need to consider the storm duration and time of concentration here in this case the peak discharge is in very less time here there is no such peak discharge there is a uniform discharge after in the case of elongated catchment see in the case of elongated catchment can see the uniform discharge here whereas in the case of a double peaked that is catchment you have a double peak here the if you see the hydrograph you have two peaks because of two different drains and center will be having divide because of this there is a peak discharge occurs when rain water flows through this stream and there is also peak discharge in this case we are going to measure this discharge at the outlet of the catchment this is the outlet of the catchment this is the entire catchment the discharge is measured at the outlet of the catchment if you see the discharge at the outlet of the catchment in the case of radial pattern you can see the peak discharge and in the case of fern type of catchment you can see if uniform discharge up to certain duration the discharge is uniform and in this case of double divide there is a peak discharge once again it recedes once again it will become peak we call it as double peak discharge that's why the shape of the catchment also is important in deciding the runoff this is also one of the factors which affects runoff that is also in another case this is a the shape of the catchment once again you can see here so the, the high drainage density we have so drainage density also plays a very important role in the previous slide i showed only shape that is radial pattern elongated pattern subdivide here in second type second slide i am showing the drainage density more number of drains are present in an unit area more the number of drains and more the number of drainage length length of the drainage if it is more then we can find high drainage density in the case of high drainage density we can find we can find peak discharge you can see the flood discharge is peak at here it is raised suddenly it is raised you can see in the drains you can see the peak discharges whenever we want to design any drains we have to study this hydrograph so based on the study of the hydrograph itself we have to do the design the design should be done for this peak discharge this is the peak discharge you have to draw the hydrographs and we have to find out what is the peak discharge and for this peak discharge you have to design the storm water drains and bridges if the drainage density is low you can see here this is the drainage density and drains length is less here the drains length is less and because of this less length of drain there is a uniform discharge see this is what happening in uh, uh, our uh, urban areas in urban areas the problem of peak discharge is same here we have designed our uh, urban areas for this type of uh, catchment earlier our uh, urban area was this type of catchment where the low drainage density was there but as the day progresses as a day progresses more and more the urbanization takes place in an urban area more number of drains will be constructed 
as you construct more number of drains the drainage length will be increased and drainage density also will be more and the infiltration rate will be less in urban area because most of the area is a concrete surface because of this high drainage density that is change in the land use pattern in the urban area more and more number of drains will be constructed because of the construction of more and more number of drains drainage density increases infiltration rate reduces and then there will be a peak discharge our drains earlier was designed for this hydrograph but as the day progresses as the area become urbanization more number of drains and these drains which are designed for this discharge cannot handle the discharge of this nature peak discharge suddenly it has increased suddenly there is a rise in discharge because of sudden rise in discharge sudden rise in discharge our drains are not designed for this particular discharge hence the overflow the overflowing is another reason for this overflow is this high drainage density so we have to design whenever you design any drains we have to design it for this type of peak discharges hence the hydrograph plays a very important role while deciding the designing the storm water drains as well as bridges this is another type of catch another type the slow shape of the catch you can see here more the drainage areas more will be the discharge discharge will become maximum next is the topography of the drainage basin you can see that this is the topography of the drainage basin right so here this is the ridge slope you can see here slope steep slopes their drainage length is more okay and these are the sub drains sub drains and this is the main drain these are the branches right branches more the drainage area more the drainage area right drainage length if the drainage length is more more will be the discharge so more will be the peak discharge and topography also plays a very important role if you have steep slope it takes less time for the rain water to reach the drains so you can see in more in my one more slide the slope also plays a very important role steep slopes if you have steep slopes the drain taken by the rain water to reach the drain will be very less and hence we can see the peak discharges discharges will be peak in the case of uh, slope slope basins high slopes basins see here this is a, another case when there is a steep slope when there is a steep slope there is a chances of water entering to the drainage basin with lesser time if you have mild slope if the topography if the terrain is right plain if you have a very plain terrain it the rain water takes less time to reach as the drain and hence peak flow will not be there peak flow irala flood peak age highest peak iradilla alli slow age gradual age water flow agutha the drain sali aadre steep slopes idaga peak discharges irutte next geological conditions here geological conditions also plays a very important role in uh, runoff if the geology if you study the rock pattern if you study if you have more number of uh, cracks and fissures in the so in the subsoil or below rock area if you have more number of fissures and cracks if it is present whatever the water which falls over the land it gets infiltrated through this cracks and fissures the cracks matte fissures irutte rocks galalli cracks irutte cracks idre enagutte male bandid neeru bhoomi olagade direct aagi hogi adu ground water na serutte avag enagutte runoff enagutte kadme agutte if you have a hard rock terrain then there will be no infiltration inside hence runoff will be more so geology also plays a very important role in affecting runoff next is vegetation you can see here more the vegetation will the catchment if more the vegetation in the catchment then the infiltration will be more the water gets infiltrated inside the soil the plants will absorb 
the rain water and hence runoff will be less that is vegetation also plays a very important role in in deciding runoff so thick dense educate dense vegetation if you have lesser will be the runoff if you don't have any vegetation if you have a plain area without any vegetation then the runoff will be more next is the land use if you see the urban areas urban areas more concrete surfaces if you have then there is no chances of water getting infiltrated into the soil hence there will be runoff runoff will be more if you have like this the plain area right in this case the water also if you have very uh, dense cultivated vegetation if you have then there is a chances of water getting infiltrated inside when water gets infiltrated inside runoff will be less if you have mountainous terrain like this then also the water will not gets absorbed okay whatever the rainfall which occurs the more will be the runoff runoff jaasti irutte yavaga runoff jaasti irutte if you have a mountainous terrain or hilly areas runoff will be more if you have an agricultural area runoff will be less because the water gets absorbed inside the soil hence runoff will be less in the case of agricultural area runoff will be more in the case of urban areas and runoff also will be more in the case of hilly terrains next is soil condition here soil is condition is also a very important factor which affects runoff if soil is wet if soil is wet like this right then there is a chances of water getting stagnated on the surface because the water cannot infiltrate inside because already the water soil is in wet condition if soil is in dry condition right if soil is in dry condition then the water gets infiltrated into the soil the rainfall which falls on the soil surface gets infiltrated inside say in the case of uh, hard rock okay if the soil is very hard then there is no chances of water getting infiltrated runoff will be more in the case of sandy soil in the case of sandy soil where the water gets easily absorbed the rain water which falls on a sandy soil will gets absorbed inside it and runoff will be less whereas in the case of clay soil there is a less chances of water getting absorbed there because entire clay itself has a moisture holding capacity clay soil has moisture holding capacity hence it the moisture which is already present in clay will not allow it to gets allow the water to flow inside it right this is how the soil condition affects the runoff thank you